say who you are. Yeah. You know, a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Just a little bit. So a few words so they know who you are. So I'm Katie Norvell. Um, I am a music therapist, a board certified music therapist. I'm also a registered yoga teacher. Um, and I am getting ready to complete my 500 hour training. Really? Yeah. So oh I my did God. my 300 hour oh. and I finished my coursework in, um, in the late spring and I still have a few things to finish up, um, for getting my like certificate. So I will be, uh, RIT 500. Oh my God. Soon. That's so amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yay. It's very, very oh, exciting it. and already looking forward to the next things. I'm like, okay, am I, you know, I've done a lot of in trauma informed yoga within both of my trainings, but I'm like, What's the next training I'm going to do? What's the next deep dive I'm going to do? So yes, I'm a yoga teacher, music therapist. Um, I am an eclectic spiritual uh, human. I love to do all things that are like rituals that put you in a place to listen to yourself. That's just kind of who I am in the world. And that's why she's here. <laughs> Oh, I love you. Absolutely. I have a lot of ideas, especially since our women's circle, like a lot of things that are seeds that I feel like were, I was been gathering over the last few years, you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, or whatever months, years, decades that finally were like, okay, like they're, I picked some and they're starting to germinate, you know, like putting them in the ground. Thank you. Thank you. Can you close the door? Um, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I I do feel. Katie, do you want to drink? Um, you know, um, I'm good actually. I'm gonna keep my water because I'm afraid I'll get like kale in my teeth or something. I have my water. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. Can you just imagine? I'm like, let you know. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not gonna be like. (laughs) (laughs) So. I mean, that's cool. I'm like clearly like all about like letting my real self in. Yeah. Like I have all my gray hair. I don't I wear makeup. Um, you know, I mean, I sometimes wear, I wear, I do drag sometimes. No way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'll have to show you Are some you pictures. Serious? Yeah. I've never like performed out in public in drag, but during, um, so I'm not even like, I guess it was during quarantine, like COVID I got, um, really into like drag race, like RuPaul's drag race, right? I've gr- I was I've been around the drag scene for decades because when I first came out back in the early 2000s, like 2002, um, a lot of my friends and people, some of my partners were drag kings um, in St. Louis. And so I was like very into the like kind of St. Louis drag scene and specifically the drag king scene like back in the day and, you know, then... I moved to Chicago like seven and a half years ago and I don't know, things are different. Um, and my partner's also like very, very into drag. And so she had watched drag race for years and I just hadn't, I don't know why. And we started watching it together and I was just like, loved it. And so inspired. And then I was like, well, I want to be a drag queen. And so I like had that, like I had a day where I like did myself up. I like put myself in drag. I don't have a drag mother, but um, I put myself in drag and it was so much fun. And for about a year, I was like very, like probably like once a month on a Friday night, I would, um, I would just, that was what I would do. I would get home from work. And again, I like, I, you know, am very natural all the time. So it was a very different persona to play with and just do like really dramatic makeup. I have, I have like five or six wigs. Um, I didn't, you know, I have a lot of crazy clothes because I am a very colorful, expressive person and I've done theater my whole life and whatever. So like, I just would like make kind of outfits and things and I would dance around my house and then my, my partner would like take pictures and it's like hilarious. So, um, I do wear makeup when I do that, but like, otherwise I'm very like au natural. So, so have you ever like perform in front of like people or it's just not in drag? drag. No, it's just been like a kind of private thing. I would love to. And I like really, when I was really kind of actively doing it, this was about like, 
two, three years ago. Honestly, it was when I started climbing about a year ago that I did started doing less drag at home because we were just like climbing all the time. Um, but I was looking around for like, you know, op not open mic, but like open drag nights, which they have. Yeah. And there's actually like, actually Chicago's drag scene is obviously amazing. Um, but there are actually quite a few AFAB queens, so assigned female at birth, mm -hmm. um, who are drag queens. Um, and, you know, which back when I was first in the drag scene, because again, I like had all these friends and partners who were drag kings. And I was like, cool. They put me in like drag as a boy once. And I was like, this is funny, but like, not, you know, like I, I'm not, this is not how I want to go around and perform. But like as an ultra femme version of myself, mm -hmm. as this like me who like the kid me who again wanted to be sexy but was like afraid to be slutty yeah. or you know like I think we have yeah. we can um you know have those stories um and you know I've I've been a dancer my whole life as well um what kind of dancing so ballet is like my ultimate like love, love um from I mean I started dancing when I was three um and didn't st I mean danced until I was 21, 20. Mm -hmm. um, I think I stopped doing ballet. I did it through a few years of college. Um, but, and then obviously, like, I love, love, love tap. Um, jazz, I mean, anything. I like to move my body. Musical theater. I did a ton of musical theater in high school and was what I thought I was going to do with my life. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I was planning on going to college for. Um, and then, honestly, like, body stuff, body image, mm -hmm. deciding that I know I, I, it was, there was so much joy from the, literally the oldest joy I know and remember in my life is dancing and singing and performing. Mm -hmm. Like that is where I am me. Yeah. Um, and I love that. However, once I hit, you know, puberty and high school and it was no longer just about the performance, but it was so focused on your body mm -hmm. um, in so many ways, you know, like what your body looked like, how people were consuming your body, you know, just all these things. And um, I just got real disordered with it and real, it was just very unhealthy. And I is actually, I was, had my dorm assignment at Indiana University, which has an amazing musical theater department. Um, I was like ready to go. And I, at the last minute, um, changed my mind because I was like, I cannot live the rest of my life having men really at the time, you know, all my directors and choreographers and things for men, having men tell me how fat I am mm. and what, you know, that I would be so amazing if I could just lose 20 pounds or if I could just, you know, oh, and I, I was know. just like, I can't, I can't. And so I changed my whole life course <laughs> and didn't didn't leave town, stayed in the town that I grew up in to go to college. I went to an amazing college. I'm so glad I did. I met my salt sister. So it was clearly like in the cards that we were both supposed to end up there, you know. Mm -hmm. But the journey of getting there and being so close to that thing that I thought like I wanted, um, I'm so glad I didn't do it then because again, it was so wrapped up and mired in other people's expectations. Even yeah. though I loved it, it was so about what other people thought and the validation mm -hmm. and not just my joy. So coming back into my body, I think it was about 10 years ago now, oh, 10 or 11 years ago that I um, started doing like bar uh, workout like um, bar method, you mm -hmm. know, like yeah. kind of ballet bar exercisey things, which was like the closest I could let myself get to going back to dance. Mm -hmm. um, I took like a tap class in my like early twenties and stuff, but I just was like, I can't like, it's all so scary, and I get all weird about my body, and then I get disconnected, and um, so I started taking a bar method class and was very into it for. Um, quite some time and just and loved like literally being at the bar and doing ballet -y type things um, but it was like felt like silly being in, like an adult woman going back to mm -hmm. dance class um, it was the one that you recently took you messaged me about or? so yeah so I recently finally no so 10 years ago I was like oh, doing this like okay, bar okay, method okay, stuff gotcha. and I was like 
this feels good. I'm starting to come back to my body. I started doing yoga as a teenager, but like, um, you know, just throughout my life kind of learned more and more and got more and more into my own home practice. Um, and so I, I think then yoga kind of became a way for me to access dance and movement in a mm -hmm. safe way. Um, because for me, I'm like, this is not exercise. I mean, it is wonderful way to move and exercise my body, but it can't be exercised. I can't look at it like that mm -hmm. because I get weird. Yeah. Um, so being able to, you know, deepen my yoga practice, you know, start going through teacher trainings and things over the last few years, um, allowed me to really kind of sink back in. And then... Here we are. I have a lot. I talk a lot, but I can come back around. Yeah, yeah. The I women's circle. <laughs> okay. The women's okay. circle. I was like, I released, I was like, the shame around stepping into my power, being my big self. And I was like, I am signing up for that dance class. I have been stalking studios and I am, th I'm like so thrilled. Like, it's just, I, and I was like, to be back in that, but in my power and be looking in the mirror and instead of being like, oh my God, my thighs and pink tights. I'm like, oh, I can see my body. Oh, look at that adjustment. And appreciate my body instead of being other people's stuff is beautiful. So I'm sorry that was a long story. No, it but, was amazing. Um, I loved it. Yeah, thank you. Wow. So that's, I don't know, even what the original no, thing was. No, it's just like whatever, bit. wherever it took you. Yeah. It gave me like overall picture of your life. Yeah. But so, I like to go deeper. Yes, please. Okay. Absolutely. Ask away. I'm in a pretty open book. Yeah. yeah. So we do have lots of uh, synchronicities because um, my dad never supported me in dancing. Like mm -hmm. that wasn't his thing, as you know, from mm -hmm. the podcast. Mm -hmm. And his favorite sentence would be, you're so fat, nobody would ever look at you when you dance. Oh. And that was my oh. affirmation for several years. Mm -hmm. And you start believing that, right? 100%. The problem with this one, mm -hmm. I use that, I use my dancing as a kind of a vipoon. Mm -hmm. So I was using dancing not for joy, but for showing my dad he's wrong. Yes. Yes. But it's not good. <laughs> No, totally. <laughs> but you know what I mean, I right? I do, I do. And I think it's so interesting when we have th these things that yeah. like bring us so much personal joy, yeah. but they're also wrapped up in other people's yeah. stuff that like sometimes you think you can't have any of it because the knots are just so deep mm. that it feels like you, you just kind of walk away. But yeah. if you can take away some of those things you you can still keep yes. the thing that brings you joy but you have to have enough awareness to realize mm -hmm. the those affirmations yeah to realize what your self-talk is and challenge that programming and move forward and rewrite that for yourself yeah understanding that it's not your way of like it's not your perception but it's somebody else's that yeah. you had no chance to like process it at the time yeah and the thing is like I don't even know, but like when I was dancing, it was literally just seducing guys because it was like, hey, daddy, look. Yeah. I have their attention. They're mm -hmm. looking at me, you know. Mm -hmm. But then it was it. You know, mm -hmm. it, it didn't go anywhere farther than that. Yeah. But then I started being confused about dancing mm -hmm. because the purity of joy, as you were saying, mm -hmm. like when you wanted to go for school, mm -hmm. you knew that. It was there was there wouldn't be like pure intention behind it. There's yeah. probably gonna be lots of armors and like yes. probably a different way of approaching it. Mm -hmm. And yoga too helped me to get back to it. Yeah. Just and I think one thing that you were saying and it was amazing how we disconnect our how we disconnect ourselves from our bodies just because we're objectified by others. Mm -hmm. And that's what's like because it's like something there's something wrong with your body mm -hmm. and you are expressing yourself through body when you dance or doing anything. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it's just like, this is whatever this is, is bad. Mm -hmm. So I need to move mm -hmm. away from it. Mm -hmm. oh, I know. It's a lot to carry around, especially when you're a teenager or like younger woman. Yeah. And you don't really understand any of it. People are just telling you like, oh, whatever you are expressing is really bad. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't do that. Yeah. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. Right. And you're like, this is just how I move through the world. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, 
I, and it's so funny because the, you know, as you're saying that, I'm like, the messages are coming from so many different directions. Obviously our parents, right? Mm -hmm. And like, I actually, uh, my parents were very supportive of my dance. They were very, very supportive of many of the things that I did. They, however, were not always supportive of how I wanted to do them. So it's like, we love that you do this. Now do it in a way mm. that is what we want. And not really my dad so much because he actually is very like, all I want for you is to be your most authentic self. Like that mm. is his like, like, even if it doesn't make me happy, if it makes you happy and that's who you need to be, that is the most important thing in Elmo I've done my job right, which is amazing, right? Like, he has not always been like that, but that is where he has come and kind of his roots. But my mom, I was very much an extension of her. I was, mm. she was very much living by, you know, again, those cycles. She, her, her mother did it to her, you mm. know? And so I was like, okay, I love this, but, mm. you know, I need to be perfect for you instead of just like loving it and moving, you know, but then, so we have those like parental figures who yeah. poison it, but then you have, you know, you have the, you have the random gross men who, you know, mm -hmm. are like making you feel unsafe about yeah. things that you do. Um, and you have honestly a lot of other women who also feeling insecure and disempowered and coming from this weird scarcity mindset of like, if someone else is found attractive or if someone else is doing something well, that takes away from my ability to be that, which is not true, you know? Um, but you know, it's for teenagers, especially, I don't know, my generation, we, that is not what we thought. Like we were very much pitted against each other, yeah. you know? Um, and so I think all of the, all of that is it's, it's not just one program, it's so, so many. many messages. Yeah, and I'm glad that you brought it up because I believe like last few years I started actually understanding like women, like gathering women together and like mm -hmm. we need to support each other in, instead of being against each other. Mm -hmm. And it's again, that was from my mom too. She mm -hmm. would be putting down so many women mm -hmm. in front of me mm -hmm. just because she felt insecure about herself. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, like, just listening to every single time we would see someone better looking or, like, better dressed or, you know, mm -hmm. and she would be just putting her down in her words. And yeah. for me, like, okay, so, like, this is how I'm supposed to look at other women. Right. Like, no, like, like that's like, your model for interaction. That's, and, yeah. And the same thing when it comes to, like, men or partners, like, how yeah. women were catty over each, like, how, mm -hmm. why are we fighting over guys? <laughs> Right? Yeah. It's all like a, a person, you know? Yeah. Just yeah. Like, oh, I saw it over lots of guys like, in my life. I mean, like, there were, it's crazy. I mean, yeah, like, it's crazy. It is. <laughs> it is, but, um, and I won't go down this whole rabbit hole, no, but go, I'm go, like, go. you know, I like, like, really I see feel like, go. you know, the whole world we had been living in and still are, but it, it is changing a whole lot yeah. because people are changing and You're people awakening. are waking up and yeah. people are like, oh, whoa, what have I been doing? Like, yeah. I've been sleepwalking. This is not how I want to do my life. You know, even people who aren't like, woo-woo, you know, like even people who are just like, oh my God, I've been really codependent. Like, I need to go to therapy. Oh, like, that is changing cycles. Yeah. So many things are going to change. But we, the world that we were living in, functioned it only worked if we were all afraid 100%. <laughs> and if we it because if we were afraid and felt terrible we will continue to buy things to make ourselves feel better and, and consume instead of just being like i have enough it's because like if we just have enough yeah like things start to crumble a little bit and i'm not trying to be like very like whoa but like yeah, like that trickles down. And so I understand why like patriarchy, you know, all, all these things um, needed me to be this way, but I didn't know that was happening at the time. So I just, again, filled with shame. I just thought I was the problem, like mm. not what I was even doing. Like I was just, I was wrong. Um, and 
realizing over the last decade how false that is and kind of feeling like the veil is being lifted. You know, it feels like in, you know, The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Where they finally like, you know, you know, controlling the thing. And you're like, oh yeah, there's, you know, there's just like a little man behind there making sure this all happens. Um, I now don't feel so dumb or gullible or whatever. I'm like, yeah, no wonder you did those things. I have a lot, I guess what I'm saying is I have a lot more grace mm -hmm. for myself. And um, I think, I can't remember if we were messaging about it or we talked about it, but I feel like it was a month or two ago and I was mentioning doing some like kind of trauma work over, you know, and like releasing some things. And you asked if I had any like rituals or processes. And a lot of the stuff that I do is just very kind of intuitive, free form. Mm -hmm. um, and I, but the meditation that I love to do for um, kind of integration and when I've been doing a lot of kind of shadow work, trauma mm -hmm. work, um, is to go back to the time in my life where those, like, just pick my age of, like, whatever was important for whatever I'm dealing with. Um, and, like, I, like, in my mind, like, physic like, I walk back kind of through my life until I'm, you know, 16. And I... I meet my 16 year old self or my eight year old self or my whatever 25 year old self. It's so fun. It's like literally my favorite thing to do. It feels almost self-indulgent. It can be so informative and like satisfying, um, you know, and I like take her and we chat a little bit back in 1996 or whatever. And then I'm like, all right, come on, come see where we are now. Mm -hmm. um, and I take her into my new, into my current life. And I walk around the apartment and I walk around my job and, you know, and she's like seeing it through those other eyes. So mm. I'm like getting this dual perspective that helps me really. And then frequently, like, I'll be like, okay, like, let's sit down and have a conversation and like ask questions back and forth. And it uncovers so much. Um, and doing that since I really, I mean, I was a women's studies and religion major in college for mm. my undergrad before I discovered music therapy. So like, it's not like even these are new ideas to me. Like I've been studying this for 25 years, but it's only been in the last, I mean, really five years, I would say like 10, but like the last five have mm. been really like, because I we moved up to Chicago um, a little over seven years ago, and that was the first time I'd ever lived outside of my hometown. Like, I was 36 years old, and I had never lived more than 30 minutes away from my parents. Like, I traveled, you know, but, like, I'd never lived further away, and that really, allow, again, allowed me to be like, oh, this is what it's like to just drive to work without anxiety, because I've, you're not passing things yeah. constantly that remind you of the past or that are like you're reinforcing all mm -hmm. of those messages so yeah so that was really amazing but when i did that and when i started to integrate that then when i had those conversations with my younger self um there was just so much grace you know and it was just like honey no wonder like it's okay yeah you were you were a lot and yeah you know there were some things that like hurt some people and whatever but like you did the best you could with what you had, 100%. you know, mm -hmm. and I couldn't say that 10 or 15 years ago. I would still be like, mm, you done fucked up. But like, <laughs> you know, like I would be like, oh, you're a hot mess. Like, good thing we're not there anymore. Instead of embracing the fact that like, and this was when I was about to finish my 200 hour yoga teacher training, this gorgeous meditation before um, one of our classes. And I felt all of my past selves waking up around me hmm. and being like, we're all here. Nice. Like the, the ugly ones, the naive ones, all of them, like all of these different versions that hmm. I've been, I was just like, they were just like, it was like an army of me. It sounds so funny, but like no. just waking up and they were like, I'm here. And they're like, I'm here, you know? And like, I was like, yeah, I accept you. Like, thank you. Join me. 
even you, crazy 24-year-old Katie, who, you know, did X, Y, and Z, you know, whatever, like, join me, won't yeah. you? Like, um, and that feels really great. It feels great, again, it's not like rainbows and puppies all the time, but like to move through the world from that place is a hell of a lot better than from, oh, where am I, you know, yeah. outside of the body. Mm. Yeah. I'm trying to just process everything you said because you said yeah. a lot. I know, I talk I do. a lot. No, I love it, I love it. Um, so, yeah, I've been reading lots of books on it and actually my next podcast is uh -huh. about literally what you're talking about, that if you are not healing, you're literally a stuck child in an adult's body yeah. and you are perceiving the world through the limitations and it could be from five years old, eight years old, anywhere you're stuck. Yeah. Basically anywhere where you something generally happened to you and you haven't processed it yet. That's your limitation right there. Yeah. So I love that you did that. One thing throughout my healing, what I recognized was that as an adult and having that programming from my parents or whatever happened to me, mm -hmm. I become my own abuser of my inner child. Mm -hmm. So I have the same conversations that my dad had with me or my mom had with me. Mm -hmm. I had that with myself. Mm -hmm. But that inner child was still there, scared, not being seen, not being understood, mm -hmm. not having that parent that my little girl needed it. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that always helps me to just be there, like being there for myself. Like I like that inner like that inner girl or the little girl never had that parent. She needed it. So like she never got accepted for those parts mm -hmm. that we were hiding. Mm -hmm. And that's why I needed to accept it for myself mm -hmm. to say it's okay. Yeah. You know, whatever yeah. you are, it's okay. Yeah. And then you have to just find your crowd of people who celebrate it about you and accept yes. that about you. Yes. Because yes. that's the only way. Because everybody are fucking weird. We are weird. Very weird. We weird. And let your freak flag fly yeah, is what I are. always say. I'm so fucking tired. Of, and that's the uh, patriarchy and all that conditioning is literally just telling you, you need to be this way so yeah. we can control you. Yeah. And it's like, I no. No, I know. <laughs> it's just like, put some colors in, you know, like why we have to be white and black. It's just like, why it has Clearly. to be like yes. one to the other. Like, yes. why can you put just some colors in? I was going to say know? gradients. I feel like we're finally, we are finally stepping into this place where we're realizing that everything is a spectrum. Yeah. Right? Like everything. Yeah. Gender, how, you know, how we're feel like feeling day to day, like what, I don't know, there's like what is okay, not even okay, like that is not even a thing, like, but like what is available, there's yeah. a whole wide range, it's not but this who, or that. Who is making those rules? Like seriously, right. who is making those rules? Yeah. Only people who are benefiting out of it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Like, like I had conversation with my husband, and like I was like again being like ashamed of my body. I'm like, oh my god, like, you know, like I always like, oh, I need to like lose this amount of like, yeah. And like, and so what's gonna happen when you lose twenty pounds? Yeah, you're gonna be exactly. <laughs> You're right, exactly the same. Yeah, it's, you're just it's, gonna... it's not like it's in a work. Yeah. Oh, in a work. Oh my god. It's just yes. crazy. But it it's is. just like. He was like saying, like, would you be happy? Like, do you think that it would like, who is telling you you need to lose twenty pounds? Yeah. And again, and you're just getting it from different like yeah magazines and movies mm -hmm. and all this shit. It's yes. just like, oh my god. I know. We've been conditioned since early, like in the movies, in the radio, in everywhere. Mm -hmm. Commercial, like everything. Everything. It's insane. Oh, yeah. So, like, if you don't start questioning it or if you don't spend time with yourself, you will never know who no. you are, what you want, what makes you happy. Yeah. It, and that, so it's so funny. So, I graduated from high school yeah. 25 years ago, this mm -hmm. past spring. So, I had my, my 25 year high school reunion yeah. about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And I went back to St. Louis for it. I'm so glad I did. It was wonderful. But the funniest thing, and I've actually, it wasn't just the reunion, I've been realizing this over the last year or two, because I'm about to turn 44, and so, you know, I When at, is your birthday? It's in April. So when I say okay. about to, I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm Aries, so I'm like, all right, let's Fire. get back to me. I'm like, okay, 
okay. I just had my half birthday was like five day, five weeks ago. So here we're moving. Yeah, no. So I'm already like, I can't wait to be 45. I love getting older. So I'm already like, yeah, I'm like a kid, like getting ready to turn 21, but like just yeah. you know, getting closer to my crone age. Um, so anyway, so I, um, in the last few years, like moving into my early into mid forties, um, you know, it's the, it's the midlife crisis time. It's mm. kind of starting, you know, or not even necessarily midlife crisis, but, um, I, I'm seeing so many people and this is like not everybody at my high school, but you know, there were a few and whatever, but that, you know, they're hitting their forties and they're like, where, where's my reward? I did all the things I was supposed to do. I went to the right college. I got the degree. I have the job. I have the right partner. I have these kids, you know, and again, not that any of these things are bad, but they're like, and not even that they don't want those things, mm. but like that they, you know what I mean? But that, that it was just this like checklist, checklist yeah. and that like, it was like, you know, maybe they wanted something different, but like, but no, I need to do this. Be and again, so they didn't ask them, well, why? Why? Who says you need to? I mean, um, again, frequently parents. I come from a pretty, like, prestigious and, like, very... Um, uh, rigid or strict. Rigid. Um, yeah, just, like, a very um, kind of privileged... Okay. Um, like, my high school. So, mm. like, a lot of families where, you know... No, we all go to Harvard. Mm -hmm. We are all doctors. Yeah. We are all, you know, like, this is what we do. This is who you marry. This is where you're allowed to yeah. be. We have put resources into this. You don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, is like, which is written. not, you know, yeah. And that, can, you know, it can be any socioeconomic status, but this very, like, I don't know, kind of old money, weird kind of thing. Um, so a lot, a lot of people who um, did that and not all, but many are like, wake, they, they're waking up and they're like, I'm, I'm still not happy. Like what I was supposed to be happy if I did all the things. Yeah. And I feel like I'm like, Oh, maybe that's where the midlife crisis happens. Right. Because you're like, well, fuck it all. And, you know, you just knock over the table and you, you know, you buy your sports car, you get a mistress, whatever people do. Um, but I'm like, oh my God, I have not done what I'm supposed to do for so, like, and for so long I was like, oh, I fucked up and oh my God, I'm such a, you know, it took me this long to do this and, you know, my peers are doing this and I'm still here. Mm. And, but now that I'm like 43, I'm like, there's like lit literally, I just, I, again, not that I'm like, I can do whatever I want because I still have limitations that I'm working to remove and perceptions in my mind and programs. But largely, I feel like if I want to have kids, great. If I don't, great. If I want to get married, great. If I don't, great. If I want to live here, awesome. If I like, it really doesn't matter because I know, because I, again, I done fucked it up a lot. Like <laughs> I have had, you know, like a Phoenix mo, you know, kind of moment a few times in my adult life, you know, where I just burned and had to rise up from the ashes. And at each time that's happened kind of twice at formative times, um, my early twenties. And then like around the time I turned 30 and, you know, deep depression, breaking lots of ties because I needed to, cause they were unhealthy, but it just complete like, I don't know how I'm going to rise from this yet at 43, I'm like, I can actually, I'm like, I love my life. And like, I, I mean, I dress like this. I, the kids call me, my hair is probably going crazy, but that, again, I love it. Um, that I have wild gray hair that I can throw up in a bun and be kind of Miss Frizzly with, um, the kids call me Miss Rainbow. I love that. Um, and you know, I, um, I never, before I moved outside of St. Louis, like I, again, I've been a colorful person. I've expressed myself, mm. but I, like, I'm horribly, horribly black and, and, you know, 
hiding my body, being small. And it wasn't until I got into the job that I've been in for the last eight years and love, which literally all day long, my, my, my job is an expressive therapist. Like, mm. that's my job title. I teach yoga and choir and instrumental ensemble and music therapy self-management groups. And that's what I do. Like, and I was like, oh, I want to, I'm going to wear weird leggings. Like I started like kind of small and now I'm like color. I just like love to like, and it's not about other people like, oh, what are they going to see? It's like, how do I want to feel yeah. today? That's why I get dressed. Yeah. I, how I want to feel because people are going to see what they're going to see, mm -hmm. but I am, I am in charge of how I feel. I love it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, it's funny that you brought up like the milestones because I recently went to my friend's house party, housewarming mm -hmm. party, mm -hmm. and I have lots of people around me who have those checklists mm -hmm. like this year I need to do this, that mm -hmm. you, you know, like this is a house for ten years, and then we're mm -hmm. gonna have a kids, and then we're, mm -hmm. like yeah, and there's these like different things are happening, which is kind of showing you it's like maybe it's not a good idea. Right. <laughs> want to see it they just no. want to see like i'm checking they're like it. no i my eye is on the prize yeah and then they're just kind of keeping out with the rest of the people and yeah. it's funny because i was the oldest one of between the group of people mm -hmm. who were there and they're like you know asking me because every single of them had like children yeah. and houses and they were like under 30. yeah and they were like so children no, no. <laughs> And I love kids. I do. I was a nanny for 10 oh, years. Yeah. I love them. However, I love my freedom more. And yes. I'm, I'm super honest with it. I just, I love children, but I'm not at a point in my life when I think a child will be happy with me. Like, I just knowing how the generational trauma is going from one person to another, yeah. and I'm not there yet. And there's so much my children is my work like I'm burning lots of different yes projects. yes and I use my nourishing towards my woman in the woman's circle mm -hmm. my students yep and I feel like that will be for me a little like better way of nurturing others yeah. than yeah. creating my own child at least at this point yeah and then do you guys have a house fuck hell no I don't want a house. Right. I don't want a house. Like, it's like I have a beautiful apartment. Yes. It's really quiet. It's really spacious. Yeah. I can clean it within like two hours. Yes. And if something is going down, Lalo is going to come and he's going to fix it. Yes. And I can go outside. I can leave the house for weeks mm -hmm. and then. I won't have somebody to take care of my plants. However, besides that... Well, FYI, like, I'm a plant person, too. Nice. I have about 40 plants at awesome. home. So uh, um, you, you have gorgeous probably, plants. Yeah, so if you I ever need to travel yeah. and you need a plant sitter, <laughs> same, yeah. you we're right by the gym. Yeah. I mean, you know, the same here, yeah, you let it. me know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need some advice <laughs> on some of those guys. Because, yeah. Anyway, but it was like so funny because then I was like walking with my husband because sometimes he was listening to certain podcast and then he get like influenced oh yeah there was a freaking time when he wanted a child i'm like dude like what the hell and he's like well whatever his name is peterson uh no i'm not saying <laughs> it. he said that everybody should have a child like what are you gonna do when you're gonna get old i'm like i shouldn't have a child just to not be alone when I'm old. Right? like that's such a Right. Like, do you hear that? Yeah. Do you hear that? I'm going I, to create another person just for so the I'm sole not, purpose. I'm just not of a, keeping like, me company when yeah. I'm older. If I'm even a, if the, I'm even alive, yeah, what what the, who the hell I'm knows? sorry. I'm from my parents and they're in Czech Republic, so like it's just like it's, it's not guaranteed that they're gonna stick around. You don't know right? what kind of relationship you're gonna get. No. Yeah. No. So I'm. So let him. You know, it's like okay. <laughs> We'll yeah. talk about it in like a year or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, he doesn't want to even hear about it. He just yeah. needs to climb and just freedom yes. and all that yep. stuff. Well, yeah. Go Sorry, on. I didn't no, mean no, to no, interrupt. No, 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 you're fine. Um, it's funny because my partner and I have had a similar journey, but a little bit opposite because I grew up like I'm the I'm the oldest of all of my siblings. How many um, siblings do you have? There are five of us, so I have four younger brothers. 
Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm the only girl. I'm the oldest. So I was like the mom, you know, mm. growing up and taking care of them. And my mom, I mean, I always was like, I never wanted to get married when I was a kid because that grossed me out. <laughs> I, I honestly, mean, I'm married. I'm going to be married for nine years in May. Yeah. I still feel weird about it. Yeah. Like, it, it's honestly, like, I just kind of was pushed because of the paperwork, you know? Totally. Like, super happy. It's not... <laughs> yeah. And this is not, like, a common marriage. This is... So, but, and I, you know... Yeah, like, that wouldn't be the case. I yeah. don't have to And we married. may, you know, for, again, my partner is a lawyer and, and is, like, very, like, is very legalistic, yeah, like, yeah. you know, kind of um, approach to marriage, which is, I mean... You know, other that again. I get love. I mean, it is love. Like we've been together for ten years. Yeah. Like I love her. And again, if we needed it, if we're buying a house together, and it makes sense if we have a kid, right? But um, for me, I didn't come out until I was twenty-two, mm -hmm. um, and I'm bisexual, and um, and so I was like, well, I just, I mean. It's just going to be fine. I'm just going to find some guy and, like, have kids. And then, like, my mom will be happy. And I know I'll be a great mother because I yeah. love kids and I love nurturing. So this is just my plan. Yeah. So I was always, like, babies, babies, babies. Um, and then, like, even, you know, my partners that I was with in my 20s that, you know, I was with for some time, um, you know, it's like, okay, yes, I want kids. And then after, you know, when I turned 30 and kind of had a big breakdown and, and was like, and let a lot of shit go, realized mm -hmm. that I needed to like leave a lot of stuff in the past. Yeah. I was like, um, I really, that's when I finally started to be like, do I actually want to have kids? Or mm -hmm. is this like just something that. Programming, yeah. Programming. Yeah. Um, and then I met my partner uh, 10 years ago and she was like, I do not want kids. And I was like, that's cool. I don't really care. Um, and then I did go through a period where I, again, was like, I want to keep up with the Joneses, b b b babies. And, but finding, again, moving here, finding this job that I love. I mean, not only it, it is my, you know, the work that I do, like my baby, but like I literally have 150 to 200 students a year that I am working with day in and day out helping break those cycles, helping them realize the way that they can be empowered to be their authentic selves and learn how to express themselves so that we can <clears throat> move people into the world yeah. that have that. And I'm like, I, I couldn't do what I'm doing at all with the same amount of energy and focus and love and climb and go to ballet <laughs> class. And now, you know, like, and be here and, and me. be here with you. I mean, I'm just like, yeah, I'll come over after work and record a podcast. And then I'm going to go take a tap class. Hell yeah. And then I'm going to like have a phone date with my best friend from St. Louis because I don't have a fucking kid. And, and again, love kids. Like this is not, this is yes. not at all. Like I really love kids. Like I, when we graduated from high school and we did our like senior superlatives, I was like the most likely to like have kids first. Like everybody was like, Katie's gonna be a mom. But my it's funny because my friends who have like done all the things and they're almost all straight um, that are like kind of pushing me on this. They're like, as I'm, you know, getting older and older and older and they're like, they just, they like quite don't believe me. They like be like, I'm just worried that you, um, that it's because Willa doesn't want kids, that you are not having kids because you've always wanted this. And I was like, yeah, I've always thought a whole lot of things that are not actually yeah. true. Can you actually respect and me saying as an adult woman, yeah. this is what I do and don't want right now, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, and if you can't, maybe I need to step back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because that's, but I, again, I think a lot of it because they're like, but I did it and it's really fucking hard and they love their kids. But it, you know, some, yeah, the, I don't know. It's Sometimes weird. I feel like people with children want you to have children. So it's just like, okay. So last time I was talking, because I've been talking about this a lot lately because mm -hmm. it's been coming up and it's almost like, 
people who have children and they want you to have children, it's almost like a validation they make a right choice. Yes, a hundred percent. That's what it yes. feels like. Yes. It's like, you mm-hmm. know, it's like, what because then it's like, instead of like, what is wrong with you, it's like, what is wrong oh, with, with me? me? Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. Yeah. And when I was at the house one week party, it was hilarious because like when they were asking me, so you don't have a children and you don't have a house. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. And how old are you? It's like, 37. Uh-huh. It's like, but you look so young. It's like, Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Oh, yes. Well, that's, yes. 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 Oh my God, girl. Like we are like the same person. I, my students will be like, you don't have kids and da 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 da. And like, um, and I'm like, no. And they're like, and how old are you? And I'm like, 43. And they're like, what? You're 43? You seem like you're like 28. And I'm like, well, granted you're like 16. So everybody, you know, yeah, you don't yeah, have yeah, age, yeah. but like, seriously, yeah. like people, Nobody really believes me. I mean, sometimes when I pull my hair back and they see all my gray, they're like, oh, okay. But, like, we do. We have youthful spirits. Yeah. And, again, I don't think that you can't have that and have children or you can't have that and have the the things that, like, society has always said. Some people, like, legitimately, after, like, self-reflection and discovery, like, they want that. And that's great. Like, that is great. But that is great because it is a choice yeah and not a should mm-hmm. like exactly that shoulds are like my biggest trigger somebody now. else's tell you i should do this why yeah. should should yeah. and then don't question it yeah yeah i'm sure there's lots of people who meant to be parents and like love family and everything mm-hmm. but it's not for everyone yeah you know so and i think People usually don't tell you, like, don't have children. Like, it's just like, you know, like... Right. Again, like, people who are happy, they're not going to be trying to tell you how to live your life. Right. And people who are not, it's like, um, excuse you. Yeah. Like, uh, why are you doing what I'm right. doing? Get, on, like, the pa- get yeah. on the same page. Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> get with the program. So, yeah, it's, again, yep. like, categorizing, boxing, and just, yeah. like... I don't know. I know. We are, I, and that, like, just kind of open-handed, you know? And, again, I'm really... I am lucky because I am a soul that from a very young age has been like, I, my biggest thing in the world is that I need to be authentic. Like, seriously, like I, when I, I almost didn't get confirmed at 14 because I was like, but I don't really believe all the things that we're saying here and this is not authentic. And how can I stand in front of a congregation and repeat these words? You know, yeah. which so, I mean, everybody, most 14 year olds don't know what they're saying. They're just like, oh, I'm just doing the thing. But I was like, I had like a huge, I had a panic attack. Cause I was like, am I gonna do the thing? Like, I didn't know until the, I did. I was like, okay, I did it. And I was glad I did. Again, I had, that was a whole path that I went down religiously that, led me to where I am now but like but I've always been like that and when I was 21 I actually it was when I discovered music therapy because I so I was going to be a minister actually so when I decided not to um pursue musical theater because I wanted to try to end the cycle of my eating disorder Mm -hmm. um and just my body image stuff um I went to Wash U in St. Louis and studied religion and women's studies and like my sophomore year. Um, and it always been like very, very spiritual and grew up in a church that was like, I mean, I was there two or three times a week, but not in the like, we're going to Bible study and like church all day. It was like the music stuff. It was like rehearsals. Like yeah. it was very, very music based and very mm-hmm. joyful. And had an excellent music program um, and was very liberal, like very progressive. Like, you know, all I knew, I was like, God just loves everyone. Like mm-hmm. that was just kind of the message I got. I'm like, yeah, like there's other people in the world. I have Jewish friends and I have friends who are Buddhist and Hindu, you know, and God loves mm-hmm. everyone. The, you know, I was, it wasn't like a heaven and hell kind of thing. So yeah. it was very, it was pretty pure as far as like being raised in a like Christian denomination. Um, so when I, went to college, um, I decided like my sophomore year, I was like, I, I think I'm called to be a minister. Um, 
And I like interned in my church um, with one of my pastors. And then I actually at like 21 got a call um, part time. as like a youth minister in a mm. congregation. It was wonderful. I was there for about a year. Um, loved it, but also like not again, became very clear as this was all going on that like what I loved was connecting with people spiritually. What I loved was not having small talk, but like being like, hey guys, like let's talk about the big things in life today. Like loved that. Yeah. Um, not the doctrine, not the dogma, not the like you need to be this. Mm -hmm. So um, even though the church wasn't like super like that, I was just like, yeah, this is not gonna fly. And, but through that church, um, I met a family that had a little boy, he was three years old at the time, um, who had been diagnosed with autism like a year mm -hmm. earlier, and they were looking for a full-time um, therapist to work with him at home and at school. And I was like, and they were like, you are so good with him. He loves you, you sing with him, and he makes eye contact. Mm -hmm. um, would you be interested? And I was like, so I told, cause I was like, okay guys, I am taking a pause on college because it's, you know, I have like two semesters left, but it's so expensive that like, I think I just need to like figure out what I actually want to do. And my parents were like, and I'm like, I'm going to go work with this kid. And they were like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. No, like one year left, you have to graduate. Like this is, what are you doing? And I remember sitting and crying on the couch and being like, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but all I know is I need to be true to myself. Yeah. And this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. So I don't have to have an answer. I just know that this isn't it. And I need to be free to find the other thing. And they, you silly girl. Hmm. Not everybody gets to do what they love. Yeah. And I was like, no, I get that. But I will. And I just, again, I knew that. And I was like, I was determined. And that's when I discovered that music therapy existed. Because he had a music therapist at school and I took him to a session. I was like, this is a job. And now here I am 20 years later. I've been a music therapist for 17 years. You know, like I went back to school right after that. And my parents, like, they're like, oh, we're so proud of you. We love you. And I was like, yeah, do you remember <laughs> how I like, like literally had a breakdown yeah. saying that like I needed to be able to pursue the things that make my soul happy and that I know I'm supposed to be doing that are like in line, Yeah, you know? And they were like, oh, I remember that. I was like, of course you don't. I think it's cool. I did, I got there. And that's know? exactly what it is, you know? And I, again, you said so much. And yeah. I was just like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, okay. Now it was just like when you were talking about, and I don't know the terms because I'm atheist. I haven't been raised in any religion. Yeah. Um, but I was always really spiritually inclined mm -hmm. without me even knowing. Like, yeah. I always, yeah, since just early intuitive age, and, were, yeah. were, were, were intuitive to the point when it was scary. I, yeah. However, it's just, I think I was reading some book and they were like saying, when we are not encouraged to um, honor our feelings when we're little, that's pretty much when you start feeling like unsafe, like with your own choices, like mm -hmm. with the authenticity thing, mm -hmm. just because like other people tells you like how you're supposed to feel what you're supposed to be doing, yeah. which is yeah. insane to me. Yeah. But that's how unfortunately we all grow up. The yes. world, grow up. Yeah. Um, that's how our parents were. That's, you know, that's what I know. Yeah. So yeah. we are not trying to say any, right. like, it's that, just, that's yeah. what it is. That's what, yeah. Um, it's kind of funny because I went through that too. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually doing CLT and I have two semesters left too. Okay. So CLT is clinical laboratory technician. It should be in the lab, in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. And I thought I wanted, it, you know, but then when I was doing my clinicals and I was going there at night, leaving the lab at night and I didn't yeah. see the day. Yeah. And I watched people who were, who were in that role for 20 years and how unhealthy there were I'm like this is not how I want to end yes. up yes. you know and it was the same thing it's just like super confused I didn't really understood where this is coming from yeah but I just knew I was exhausted from life exhausted from everything that was happening and I knew if I finish it I already had lined up three different jobs mm -hmm. if I would finish it I'm gonna be signing up for something I don't want yeah 
And that's why this might not make any sense to anyone. Yeah. But this feels right. Yeah. And I need to step away from this. Yeah. And then just took me to health coaching. And then health coaching was kind of superficial. I wanted to go deeper. And that's how I ended up in yoga. Mm -hmm. And it's just taking me. And I honestly have, I know what am I doing right now feels really good. Mm -hmm. Like yoga, Reiki. Um, I love the women's circles and I want to do mm -hmm. more of like ceremonies and empowering women. Mm -hmm. and I think this is my path. Yeah. But again. That's what it feels now. That's it might change. Right. And yes. if it won't feel aligned, I'm yeah. going to change it to something else. Yep. And that's why I feel when people have this checklist, like, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that. You're so, like, so limited. Yes, you were, yes, you were just, just, you're putting you're blinders like, on oh yourself. My God. Yeah, we both did the yeah. <laughs> movement at the same time. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, so, it's just, and it's so somewhat sad to watch sometimes mm -hmm. because like my mom and my mom is like I love my mom we're like besties mm -hmm. but she is showing me how I don't want to end up oh yeah she's been saying the same thing over and over again for 20 years yeah. and she's stuck on the same spot and she tells me I'm not lucky like you to do whatever you like I want you know so I guess it's oh. just so yeah and yeah. it's just sad but like i'm showing that it can be done yeah and i love that you said the whole thing like i trust myself you know i learn how to listen to my intuition being authentic and i show it can be done and i'm showing that i can be happy with what i do and then other people who have that old mindset start seeing it oh yes it can be done yeah like, I can't tell you how many, and it's been really cool. And like, again, I feel like it just, this, I was put in the, you know, on this path for this reason to come into the, the school where I work um, when I did, because, you know, I started and, and I mean, you know, I was well liked, it was all fine, but like, I was, I had put myself back to sleep for a while. Like, I've been like aware of, all, like you know that the world is a little different than we think for a long time but I've also in the last 20 years had periods where I was just like I gotta go far away from that because nobody else is where I am and that's just too much so I Can you know just talk about that for a second though yeah a hundred percent yes I, feel like I would love to I don't get to talk about that very much it feels so. yeah absolutely absolutely sometimes I feel so fucking crazy yeah like even like my husband like he doesn't understand any of this oh yeah like, at all How oh is no your partner? oh so no my partner is also like literally the furthest you could get <laughs> from being like woo woo um and it's so funny though because i realize that she gets more understanding the more credit i give her like yes. there were so at the beginning of our relationship i mean again i was real closed off like i don't think i'd like looked at my cards and least like a year you know it was like oh maybe I have it they were like off to the side it wasn't like part of my life I yeah I just I was very disconnected how did you get into it things. though how did you get into your tarot cards and my tarot cards oh, no. oh gosh um how did that start then? yeah that started back in college like original college washu I was um like 21 I was actually still working in the church that was kind of the very end of, and part of me mm -hmm. being like, this isn't for me because I'm opening up to something that is much wider yeah. than that. Um, but I, um, I actually was taking a course on the North American religious experience mm. um, throughout the uh, last few centuries, um, which was fascinating, which was taught by a man who was a Franciscan friar and then left the friary, met and married um, a Jewish woman. They both kept and practiced their faiths. And then he like adopted two like indigenous kids mm -hmm. and like raised them in their like, tr like with their like tribal like beliefs mm -hmm. and like you know like they were active within their like indigenous communities as well like the most fucking phenomenally interesting man 
Um, and so he's teaching this class and it got to like, you know, kind of, you know, I'm just seeing these like awakenings that are happening over the last like 300 years, getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. I'm like, here we are. And then it was like, he was like, and he was talking about the like kind of neo-paganism mm -hmm. that's kind of had cropped up. And this is like the late nineties. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is like 90, 99, 2000, something like that. Um, so, um, I was like, Oh, I'm like, you know, I'm curious. I also, when I was, I was younger, when, this is so embarrassing. It's but not. Do, do you remember the movie The Craft? Yeah. Okay. So I was like 16 when that came out, I yeah. think. And I was like obsessed. <laughs> and my best friend will tell you, she lives in Chicago too. Um, she, I was like, I'm a witch. Like I said, I was just like, oh, like, and again, not the like, clearly, like it's okay. The Craft, right? Can like, we not... just say this? This is a fucking safe space. Yes. I'm fucking rich too. Okay, and I did, thank you. I did crafts when yes. I was like 12 years yes, old. Yes, yes, yes. This is okay. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, So Don't worry. since I was like 15 <laughs> or 16, I was like, oh, that's me. Like I saw her, like Robin or whatever, the girl, and she, and I was like, oh, okay. So that's what I am. And I was like, I need to find my coven. And I was like, and like apparently I was like trying to get my friends to like start a coven. And they just thought it was hilarious. Um, so that was like a teenager. And then again, I get like m more and it never really felt bad. Like as far as I wasn't like, Ooh, it's evil. I was just like, no, this is just who I am. Like, and if there's nothing wrong with me going to church and singing and doing this, like that's all lines up. I'm just, there's this other piece to things. Right. So when I'm in college, I'm taking this class. I'm like really intrigued by what I'm hearing. And then um, it was just all these synchronicities. Okay, so um, I was auditioning for a play. Um, was it the Scarlet Letter? Mm -hmm. It was something, it was something with a witch. No, it was something with a witch. Um, oh my God, what's the one? Uh, I don't know, anyway. No, it, it's like a, a straight play. Anyway, I, there was an audition on like a Saturday afternoon and I like decided at the last minute I wanted to audition and I needed a copy of the play. And I was like looking for bookstores mm -hmm. around and there, and I, there was a bookstore called Mystic Valley that was like really close to me. And I didn't realize it was a metaphysical bookstore. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's Mystic Valley, <laughs> right? I mean, but like, again, this is like 2000, 2001. This is not all over the place. Yeah. Like, you know, the internet wasn't even, I mean, it was a thing, but it wasn't, Google wasn't like the way it was. So you couldn't just like, be like, am I a witch? Like, what should I do? Like, you know, type stuff in or see what, you know, find a chat group. There was like nothing. So anyway, uh, totally unbeknownst to me, I'm like going, I really needed to go to like Borders or like something like that to like get a play, mm -hmm. but I like show up at this metaphysical bookstore and I'm like, oh, I'm home. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. And that is kind of when I started to like deep dive. Mm -hmm. And, and then I was like really grappling again with the church because I was like, I'm starting to read things about like neo-paganism and there's not, I mean, I'm very clearly a witch. Um, and, but very eclectic. I don't have any particular like Again, I, I don't like doctrine. I don't so like people like, telling me what to do. Yeah. What does it really mean when you say you're a witch, though? Because I feel like it's, again, a label that we put, it is. put onto us. But yeah. what does it really mean? Like, it why means, you... I, well, it means a few things. Mm -hmm. A, it means um, I am a woman in my power who, through that power has a connection mm -hmm. to the earth, to other people, I mean, to everything. Mm -hmm. And that, through that, there are things outside of concrete, like knowing mm -hmm. that I can know. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I have within me intuitively ways to get myself to a place that I can 
create what I want for myself. Not in a way of like, like, poof, you know, or whatever, but like what I've realized is like create the feelings inside me that are going to move me to those things. Mm -hmm. And like, that's what ritual is about. Like yes. not I'm like, glad you said ritual. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I love so that. ritual again, ritual is a big part of it. But again, for me, it's not, it's not ritual makes a witch, mm. but somebody who I think would identify as being a witch or what makes me feel witchy mm -hmm. is that I've, I'm deeply moved by ritual mm -hmm. and understand the importance in ritual for us connecting to power mm -hmm. and that, um, it is, you know, there's no right or wrong way other than if it's authentic to you or not. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I no, think, no, 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 no. Yeah. 100%. That's pretty much what it is. Sometimes, and I get it with lots of my Reiki clients when they come to my sessions, they do have uh, experiences that mm -hmm. they experience during like meditation or during like Reiki session or any of that. Mm -hmm. And this is something that, like, if you say that to normal, like, not normal person, but somebody who doesn't practice, yeah. like, spiritual modalities then they might not experience that yeah and then they feel like they're crazy yeah and more those experiences you have more you're aware of the gifts mm -hmm. like of connecting with the intuition like understanding like you know like connecting with mother gaia and different realms and there's different things you you connect with your higher self through probably your tarot. Mm -hmm. I do it through energy work and I do have lots of different things that happen that I am I'm not even yeah, understanding how like, it happened. Okay, yeah. I literally travel in time. Yeah. Like I was experiencing my birth. Like I was watching being born. Oh, that's so cool. It was I wanna insane. do that. That's so cool. Um and yeah, and it's like Somebody says that spirituality, it's like having a stomach ache. You're the only one who knows you have it. The mm -hmm. rest of the people will trust you or won't. You know, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. So that's to me, saying. I was always connected like nature and I could predict things from early age mm -hmm. to the point when it was a little bit scary to me mm -hmm. just because like I would dream something and then next day it would happen mm -hmm. or um, I would just know we will have a pop-up quiz and I would know what question would be there. I kind of like see things mm -hmm. um, and then I would like have a certain feelings like I know I would meet this person at a time even though I haven't been in contact with this person for like three years. Mm -hmm. So that would be like those kind of things would be happening. Yeah. But then it got to the point where I was... Um, seeing things that I don't want to really see that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like my dad's car accident or... Mm -hmm. So that's why I like suppress it. Then. Yeah. However, I did was into the metaphysics store. That was like my hometown. Mm -hmm. Like it was like, you just felt so like, it was almost like intrigued, but inside, like, like intrigued. Like it, it was almost like it pulls you in. Yeah. Yes. And you, you are not even understanding like why. Yes. But I was like numerology and I did have like a like a witchcraft but it was like you, we were differentiating between like a white and black magic to me ritual is like literally money manifestation with just different objects mm -hmm. that will just help you to get into that energy more yeah, exactly. but that's what it is that's what it is it's like affirmation yeah. fire it's just like it's no big deal yeah, exactly <laughs> well, and i think what the funniest thing was is that, so i'm coming into this and like i'm in the church yeah. right which is like just took over all the pagan stuff, yeah, yeah. right? Like the, you know, cat, well, if you didn't grow up in the church, I'm not sure if you are aware, but like so many of the things in, um, especially Catholic, I'm not Catholic, I was raised Presbyterian, so it's like Protestant. Um, so like, you know, women can be pastors, people can get married and mm -hmm. still lead the church and all that stuff. Um, but, you know, it's like, they start the service and they walk in with incense. Mm -hmm. We have altar boys who light the candles. Mm -hmm. We get up and we sing. You know, it's like a prelude and a post. I mean, like, it's a fucking circle. Mm -hmm. Like, it is, it's ritual. It's, yeah. you know, and we're doing things 
to move us into a meditative mindset. Mm -hmm. We're singing the songs to get our minds to focus on the things to give us our affirmations. We're getting a sermon. We're getting, you know, like yeah. all of those pieces are, are just setting just you up, to, setting you up to connect. Yeah. They're getting you in the right headspace. They're, they're, you're not worried that you're going to hell because someone's lighting a candle on the altar <laughs> where you are drinking wine and eating bread that you are saying is someone's body and blood. Like, oh my I'm sorry. <laughs> that, I mean, that's literally what that is. And, and like, again, my church, um, I mean, true Catholics, like that's transubstantiation. They like truly believe that when they take communion, that is like the blood and body of Christ that they are like taking a piece of him. We, for us, it was always like, this is symbolic. We're a community. And so we break bread together. We drink, we didn't do wine. We had grape juice. Um, okay. But like, it was just like little tiny things. And we would all, and you know, you would go through the scripture of very ritualistic. Mm -hmm. We did this the first Sunday of every month, you know. Mm -hmm with the full moon <laughs> oh my god it's why easter moves around every year because easter is based on well <laughs> easter is based on um uh passover and seder right because it's like the last supper in mm -hmm. jesus right but that is even like based on lunar cycles so when that falls is after like the first full moon after the equinox. So it can be anywhere between the end of March or the end of April, depending on how the moons fall. So it's just so funny to me that our liturgical calendars, the way things that people do in a religious service, like all this, this stuff, when given that mm -hmm. veneer that is acceptable to the program that we've been running for thousands of years you know that's fine but like you do any of those same things what you know and be like oh witchcraft it's like what what is <laughs> the difference like, between those two though so i th i think it's it's the it's the personal power mm -hmm. in a church you're doing these things because you are not worthy you need someone else yeah you have to believe you need yourself. daddy yeah. to be like you're okay i forgive you honey so it's literally i mean literally that's what it is you're asking for forgiveness you know to do and like i have i mean like i actually and that was the thing that was really cool when i started reading these books about like yeah. neo-paganism and wicca and things and like for a long time i was like i'm wiccan i don't know that i would say i'm wiccan i don't like you know, do like, you know, the God and the goddess and whatever, but this like holy like duality, mm -hmm. this like God and goddess or like mother, father, God or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, oh yeah, I dig that. I, I'm cool with mask. Like, you know, I can work with masculine energy. Masculine energy is not inherently bad. It's wonderful. I have a lot of it in me. I'm an Aries. Um, but like, you know, but we need that balance. We need mm -hmm. the mother. Um, or, you know, we need the feminine. 100%. And so that when I started reading about more of like the theology of like Wicca, mm -hmm. that's when I was like, I don't have to really change anything about this to make it feel true to me. Mm -hmm. Whereas I was making excuses for a whole lot of things within Christianity, you know? Yeah. So, um, and again, I think it, it, it comes down to that personal thing where 100%. it's like it's not you're not asking for permission you're saying i have power and in my power i call on that i mm. call on this energy i call on a God. i mean i don't really do like god goddess work a ton um but i again that's really my tarot is there with all the archetypes mm -hmm. right so that's what tarot became why i got into it i mean first i was just like it's cool and interesting and it's witchy and i'm curious and i want to predict my future and then i very quickly realized that's not what it actually is right like at all at least for me um it is um clarification mm -hmm. it's insight um it's it is spiritual for me but i don't believe it has to be spiritual for people to benefit from mm -hmm. it right like could, yeah. yeah i mean like i tell me because i've done readings for my partner not a ton but like only in the last like probably year and a half or so have i felt comfortable enough mm -hmm. to actually like 
get my cards out on the table. Like, you know, because I just thought she would roll her eyes and make fun of me. And there's been a little bit of, you know, yeah. at times like, you know, joke, but it's, it's loving. Mm -hmm. And I actually, when I kind of explained to her, like, yeah, this is why, again, like, I, you know, follow the cycles of the earth. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, I pay attention to the moon because it's a really great way of helping me make sure I'm being balanced in my approach to things. And when it's waxing, I think about what I want to invite in and what I want to grow. And when it's full, I think about, wow, how far I've come or what I want to release, you know. And yeah. again, like, it's just the cycles and it's it feels right for me to mm -hmm. be tuned in. And she was like, well, that's the most rational explanation of spirituality I've ever heard in my life. And I was like, cool. So she's very like, mm -hmm. I get it, but she's like absolutely an atheist. And um, but she is doing the wake up like, like codependency mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. of like being aware of her self talk and her affirmations and the expectations she's put on herself because she thought that's what other people wanted or what she needed to be happy. So like, again, even though she is not at all woo, yeah. she's, I mean, one of my biggest supports as far as being authentic and real. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's really hard like to have, you know, I mean, if I'm like, God, I like, I was having this meditation where I like really wanted to like connect with my guides and I felt like this was it, you know, she would be like, oh, I, all right, honey. I mean, I love you, but like, that's weird, <laughs> you know, where like, and again, I can get it. It can sound weird, but is it really any weirder than people being like, yeah, I was really upset. So I opened up my Bible and I prayed to the big guy up in the sky. And then his son was who was born from a virgin. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't I don't know. I, I feel like I'm talking myself into a hole now. But no, it's OK. Well, um, there's a few things that I do want to like point out, like when yeah. you're saying about like the church and the spirituality and the thing is like I'm atheist. Like I've never been to like I didn't have a relationship to it because nobody yeah. raised me and nobody forced me to it. Yeah. But like from interaction and what I see also some pattern in the movies and stuff, it's like their churches, basically people want to believe in something. They yeah. want the guidance. And yeah. that's why it's just like, basically I'm not worried of like making my own decisions. So I need somebody else to tell me like how to live my mm -hmm. life or like setting certain rules yeah. and correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. When it comes to spirituality for me, spirituality is just, living the most authentic and the best version of yourself mm -hmm. and it's more of working on yourself so then you can accept other people for who they are yes. without judging them or limiting them yes and just allow them to be themselves next to you mm -hmm. it's just like you're able to hold that space for it yeah um but spirituality or whatever this is i also don't like labels so mm -hmm. i don't whatever um it's about trusting the unknown. It's really yeah. being able to lean in. And whatever is happening in your life, you just know you will be okay. Yeah. It's just, I think that's the, like, the most, I think that's where the power is. When yeah. you can just detach and surrender. Like, there's times when shit goes crazy, like, from day to other day. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, dang, you know, like... Mm -hmm. I, before I started my podcast on YouTube, uh -huh. sorry. I oh, no, 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 no. I just, just remembered, I, I remembered, remembered something and I want to remember it because <laughs> yeah. it was good. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. So before I started, I was like complaining to my husband. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to have enough time for all this stuff. Yeah. Next day, uh, two of my clients, like, we're moving to Florida, so we won't see you till like next year. Or yeah. Something. I was like, well, well time to serve <laughs> up. Yep. Ask and you oh, shall receive. Yeah. yeah. All right. What did you want to say? Oh, I was going to say yeah. just like with the like, you know, things change a lot. Like one of, um, there's a woman that I really love, uh, Jessa Reed. Um, and she, uh, she's a comedian. Mm -hmm. um, she does tarot readings. Um, and she just, you know, does a lot. She has a podcast also on kind of, you know, awakening and mm -hmm. spirituality. Um, and she's hilarious. And she, you know, has been, talks a lot about, like, letting life have its way with you. Mm -hmm. And I, like, love that, like, term. Because it's just, it, again, and I'm like the Wheel of Fortune card. You know what I mean? Like, shit happens. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's nuts. And sometimes it's all of those things in one. 
you know, and um, so I then laughed because Friday morning I woke up and I had had like, like a really powerful week and making a lot of changes for myself and just feeling really good. And I woke up and I'd started some new little additions to my morning routine and I put on um, a like a shuffle playlist because I mm. like to be like, all right, spirit, tell, like I'm going to get on my Spotify and like. I'm going to hear what I need to hear right now, like, you know, and the song that first came on was a beautiful chorus song, which I know you've used some of their music in your um, yoga classes before, and it's called Darling. It's from the Hymns of Spirit album, mm. and it's um, the lyrics are, darling, darling, you're beautiful. You got to keep your head up. Um, uh, uh, please don't ever give up. Um, you know, just it's like yeah. this very beautiful, peaceful song, and I'm like, listening to it as I'm like making my tea in the morning and doing my breathing and I'm getting ready to sit down and drink my tea and read my cards. This is what I do every morning. I, I it's my, I asked my spirit guides for beta for the day. I was like, <laughs> do you got any beta? That's, I don't know how many. Uh, if you're a climber, <laughs> probably, I don't know if any climbers will end up watching this, but I ask my spirit guides for beta. I love it. Um, and that always makes me giggle. Um, so I'm like, all right, what's my beta for the day? Um, so anyway, so I'm like going into it and my best friend, who's just the most amazing soul, I may invite her to our, uh, women's circle yeah, too. She lives in Louisville, do. Kentucky. Okay. Um, yeah, but again, it's on zoom. So, um, anyway, we frequently text each other in the morning with like a song or just like, um, art. She also reads cards. And so we'll like just text a picture of our morning reading and be like, Whoa, this is going to be a doozy or whatever. Um, and so I like sent her that song and I was like, we made it to Friday, darling. Like, <laughs> this is the song that came on to me. I feel like maybe it'll be good for you. Like, I'm like all love and rainbows. And then that day just went, Wah! like it was crazy at work. The kids were, uh, I was, uh, mm. um, cried like four or five times throughout the day you know like every time I like wasn't with students I was like oh like just bad <laughs> and like and then I like got home from work and I like looked at my phone and I like saw like she like loved the text or something and I was like holy crap that was 12 hours ago so much and and then I was like I'm gonna listen to that song again Cause like, I was like, Oh, this is lovely. Thanks spirit. Like, thanks. Um, and I listened to it and I was just like bawling because it was like, Oh, that's why I needed. I didn't even realize, but you know what? Mm -hmm. Like I stayed present through it. I was in the emotions and it, I, I still manifested what I want. I didn't try to say how it was going to look. I rolled with it and I got where I needed to be. Whereas in the past, I would have been like, this is uncomfortable or blah, blah, you know, and I wouldn't have reflected. So I think there is so, yeah. Oh my God. You said so much because like when you said the will of fortune and I think one of the things as a spiritual people or like what we believe, first of all, be in the present moment, like mm -hmm. through it all, mm -hmm. like trusting you can feel it, you can go through it, and you'll be okay. Yeah. And I think that's the power. Yeah, yeah That's where absolutely. the power is in. Yes. And the same thing is like, we know that as the moon phases are changing, or like, like not night and day, we wouldn't know the good if there's not the bad. A hundred percent. And I think like once you can lean to the stuff that is not going your way, and you can still embrace it, mm -hmm. and have fun with to me life is a fucking joke like it's a it game is. it's just it a is. play it's i'm like, like i am here to experience as much as possible yeah. and like i've already experienced a lot of really uncomfortable yes. things um and i'm sure i will continue to yeah. because that's what being human is it's yes. boring if being it's all human. nice and fun mm -hmm. you know but like in the meantime bring it on yeah okay. sorry don't like bring it on bring it on <laughs> but like <laughs> I, I am, I am ready to cross whatever bridge I need to cross. I, I always do rise to the challenge when yeah. it presents itself. I'm still fucking here. My Phoenix still rises. I have yeah. a Phoenix tattoo on my back and that's my like, you know, I just remind myself like, you know, I have a, a quote on my wall. Um, 
uh, Octavia Butler, um, uh, in order to rise from its ashes, a phoenix first must burn. And I'm like, that's, you know, like, yeah. okay. You don't get your phoenix moment if you don't fucking burn sometimes. Well, you know? Yeah, sometimes that takes it's, three to six months and it's the uh, most yeah. painful shit ever. Absolutely. However, sometimes once you rise, you got so much strength <sighs> and so much power and... Anytime we burn again, it's not gonna be as like the first burn is the, the first burn is the worst, worst. absolutely. Oh and God. after that, and like the beauty that comes when you rise, and like I, I just love the phoenix. Um, th there's so many things within that mythology that I really resonate with. Like I mean, this, the healing song, right? Like yeah. they sing, and that's healing. Um, that their tears, I think that's part of the, some mythology that like their tears are healing. Oh, yeah. So like, you know, and I'm like, yes, because when we are in our full selves and we're feeling our emotions and we're being real with people, feeling your emotions is healing for both you and the other 100%. people. Yes. Like that's when you get your power mm. is when you can access it and not when you're like perfect and teaching the great yoga class so that everybody's zen at the end or like i know what you, you know mean. what i mean yeah. um, just being a human being just human. allow yourself to be fucking human. being human and letting holding space for other people yeah. to be human with you mm -hmm. I, I think that's hugely powerful and also like it's it's really hard to do but it's not at all inaccessible for anyone and i think i don't know about you but i i know that my yoga journey and my mindfulness journey um, has allowed me to drop into that because that is how I got back into my body, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I think that if you can't, if you haven't taken those first steps, like my partner is an avid meditator, okay? Mm -hmm. So like even though she's not woo, like she's been meditating. I mean, she's had times where she goes away from her practice and then she's like, oh, I got to pick it back up for, for 20 years some years so like having a mindfulness practice yeah. and giving yourself space inside to sit with things is the first step 100 percent. and yeah. i'm glad that you mentioned yoga because there's lots of yogis who've done yoga for 10 15 years but there are those workout yogis or like mm -hmm. gymnast yogis mm -hmm. and tricks yogis and mm -hmm. they will never get to that point right which is like yoga is amazing however mm -hmm. you need to stay for shavasana you need to like do the mindfulness the stillness yeah. i would say stillness you don't have yeah. to close your eyes no. like journaling just being with yourself yeah. and see what's come up yeah because if you don't give yourself a chance you're never gonna learn about yourself never that's why phones right like that's why there's so many distractions yeah because they don't want you to know who you are. No, absolutely. <laughs> oh my God. When I am like, I I am um, gu guilty of, I have I games I on my phone. My I was like, I'm actually proud of myself. My phone's like in the other room. Are you I cold? Just, like, Should I close the window? No, I'm good. good? No, okay. I'm good. Um, I, so I um, have a few games that I like mm -hmm. to play on my phone yeah. for like transition time and just to like let myself like decompress. You know, with my job, it's good. Like, there's a lot going on, and sometimes it's, like, really intense and, um, you know, physically, emotionally, like, whatever. And it can be nice to, like, play Mahjong. I love you know, Mahjong. I, you're right? Like, I love <laughs> Mahjong. So, like, I'll play some Mahjong or whatever. Yeah. And, like, that's not terrible. But, like, so then there's, like, uh, like, games that I'll play, and they'll be like, ooh, and there's an event, and they're sucking you in, and you got to come back. And then I'm like... Why do you want my attention so much? What do you want to keep me from doing? And like, not in a like, like paranoid way, but just in a like, if I am not being distracted by that, what am I, where does my brain actually go? And like last week I did like a really, again, not a phone fast, but I was just, I wasn't playing my games during the day. I was just like, I, I am going to try to use this downtime and this transition time to do some yoga, to do some breathing, to listen to music, mm -hmm. to just do some other things because I'm trying to shift here. And um, and it was awesome. And like, it's not like, and then I was like, okay, I, I swung really far. It's okay for me to, to have some distractions. Like, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. That's However, awesome. that first, again, the mindfulness, just be aware that every time you do that, you're like, yeah, 
I am doing this instinctively. I mean, like, I'll open my phone and, like, pull up Facebook or Instagram without even realizing I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm scrolling, and I'm like, how did I get there? Yeah. And then how long have you been on it, How long have I been on it? That's the scary part. Yeah. So, yeah. And... Yes. Um, sometimes when I go through like a hard time and mm-hmm. I'm not realizing that's the same thing, like because like I'm trying to keep myself busy. Yep. I don't want to be with myself. Like yes. I know there is something that I don't want to yep. be. I don't want to feel. Mm-hmm. But then it's just like, OK, yes, let's just sit down. Let's take a bath. Let's just, you know, yeah. and then I'm like, we'll be here for 20 minutes. I put my alarm on. I just mm-hmm. like just 20 minutes. Yep. And then yep. emotion comes up. Gonna cry to cry. Fuck, cry yes, out. cry, cry it out. out. Or whatever, it whatever it is. Yeah. Sometimes you know, sometimes you don't. And yes. that's okay. Just need to let it out. Yes. And not trying to tell a story about all yeah, the emotions no. that come up. That's something I've really, my, I really think it was like in the last three or four years since my first yoga teacher training that I really realized how many stories I was telling myself about all the emotions that came up. Mm. And learning to just like kind of label it and not try to be like, oh yeah, that's probably because I'm be like, yeah, I'm just feeling discomfort here. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling empty. You know, like Mm -hmm. it is. And I'm back to my breath. Like that, that practice. So it depends. Um, I agree with that. I feel like lately because I think I've done lots of inner work. So Mm -hmm. now I don't really know like the bits of pieces i just know there's still something little pieces yeah. stuck and i just need to let it out yeah. but when i started it and since i'm a reiki practitioner as well mm-hmm. um and i read sensation in people's body so mm-hmm. that's how i read it within myself mm-hmm. and i just like when you knew about the school when you wanted to be done with it and just yeah. something was telling you yeah so i always try to sit with myself and feel the sensation in my body and then just see if i can point out what is the feeling and then if it has connection with something and if mm-hmm. it's not it's just i just let it out but yeah. i give a chance to just like what this sensation is trying to tell me yeah what abs- am i about to learn yes them? and actually thank you for clarifying that because i do agree okay. with that i don't think that all like i don't think always that yeah, yeah, we yeah. shouldn't try to connect mm-hmm. what our emotions are telling us i just know for myself um that telling a story about it has been a way for me to dance around actually feeling it. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Does mm-hmm. that make sense? You want to more like logically like... Bringing my head to a heart yeah, party. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I know. That's another Jessa saying, so I didn't coin that, but I really okay. like it. Bringing yeah. my head to a heart party. I love that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like trying to yeah. think my way out of it instead of just feel it. Mm. And then again, that not, to, that not to say you don't get thoughts from that or major feelings because I get the most knowledge from my feelings and that like again I'm like I learned something and I can't articulate it until I have to but I'm like oh yeah no no it's different now I'm good like and I just know it you know is it in your heart is it in solar plexus where do you feel the most sensations like um it's definitely I would say solar plexus nice um I mean a lot of solar plexus work took a yellow bath bomb bath last night Hmm. it's like all right i am me like and it's okay like yeah that's for me too i think i always like my bungee were crossed as a child and mm-hmm. like every single time when i know something is someone is crossing my boundaries it just fires up mm-hmm. and i get like redneck and i'm just like <sighs> oh my god i get the redneck too yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. so and that's i always know like my uh, so I was originally going for the counseling school. Yeah. Yeah. And everything kind of looked great. Mm-hmm. However, then there were like a few red flags or like I just felt like I was compromising my whole life to make it work. Uh-huh. And it doesn't happen that often, but like when we were during that open uh, open day or whatever that was, like a open, whatever it's called, like just we went there for two days and then just kind of tells you all about the school. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like an open house type open thing. Open house. Yeah. There. Yeah. So and then, like, last hour, we did a case study. And during that case study, I just realized, like, oh, this is not what I signed up for. Yeah. And then my freaking soul, like, screamed at me. Like, literally, contraction of my entire body. I felt so much, like, heat. And, like, I felt like... <gasps> and it, it just, like... Yeah. It just said, like, you know. And 
it just happened like really quickly yeah. and I'm just like and yeah. you just knew like yeah. it was just like there like mm-hmm. you know like your body communicates with you so when you feel contracted and small mm-hmm. and like you cannot breathe mm-hmm. it's a no and when you feel open and relax it's yes. usually yes yeah. and that's how you can communicate with yeah, your body yeah absolutely yeah you just have to ask yourself and see if you contract or yeah but it's like sometimes it's just like <laughs> And that's when, like, spirit guys comes in, mm-hmm. or, like, you know, sometimes you just get, like, hey. <laughs> right, like, yeah, like, yes. excuse you, yep. 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 what are you doing? <laughs> Listen, did I stutter? Like, all the time. And I'm, like, I'm sure I'm going to, like, go home what tonight did I tell you? and get that. Like, yeah, but it's so funny because I actually, like, recently I, like, had this sense with, and, like, I have a very interesting like relationship with like when I say like my spirit guides because for a long time I feel like really silly saying that out loud right also because like I have this like very and it's becoming clearer and clearer all the time like connection and like a, like conversation in my head with like my like you know my higher self um that I Like, very much, for so long, I was like, I'm just talking to myself, you know? And yes, I am. That actually is what I'm doing. I'm talking to myself. It's myself. But it's a a different perspective myself, you know? It's a bigger me. Mm -hmm. I'm just this little piece of it, and it's got more going on. Um, At least that's how I kind of understand it right now. Um, Anyway, but like, um, you know, and a lot of times I think that was coming to me in when I was younger, like in prayer, right? Mm-hmm. Like, cause I would be like praying and then that, like, that would be the, the conversation. And now I understand it is more just this, but like the more I realize that I'm not just like kind of bouncing around thinking things in my head, that it feels more like a, like a listening. Like, I feel like they get, they've like gotten cheekier. And I don't know if it's just me, but it's like, you, like, and I'll like laugh, like, I'll be like, be like, be like, again, like, I stutter or be like, yeah, let's see how, like, do it. Let's see how that works out for you again. You know, just whatever. And I'm like, you're rude. And it's like, I am, you know, and I, I don't know why it's, no, I don't get to talk cool. about it's this cool. much, but like, no, you fine. know, it's, um, it's funny because I always like, Again, that could make me sound crazy. I know I'm not. I'm not schizophrenic. I'm not actually, like, you know. It happens to me, too. Right, right. It's normal. But, like, but I, um, I feel now that what, like, it doesn't even matter. Like, it doesn't even matter where, you know. We all live in our own world. We're in our, yes, yeah, I'm in my just, world. Yeah, everybody's. And yeah. Um, but I've, like, really, like, I've, like, I think I have felt for a long time, like, um, I want to have these, like, big, like, poo experiences, yeah. you know, like ayahuasca ritual or like whatever have you done and it i have not okay. i really i'm very curious so actually my best friend that mm-hmm. i'm have you no i am okay. my meditation gets sometimes really too vivid vivid that i am super afraid of ayahuasca i am so i again i am very curious but i don't know that it's ever anything i would do because mm. i just don't i just don't know how that would go for me but my best friend, one of my best friends, has done, I think, two ceremonies, mm. um, kind of spread out, and um, they've been very transformative and powerful for her, and that's awesome. And like, I feel like there's this thing in me that wants something like really big like that. But my like, it's like, why do you need that? Like. So it's, it's a, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that you brought it up because I do have lots of friends who does it mm-hmm. and it's almost like on a monthly basis. Oh gosh. And it's, I feel like they're almost addicted to that feeling of like, because you are, you feel like you are getting reborn and like yeah. you die and reborn. However, if you don't process what happened and sometimes when you're not ready to see what happened during the ayahuasca, you are, I have friends like, 
oh, all this thing happened, but I don't really understand it. It's like because you're, you are not ready to see it. Right. I, I think like your ego wants you to do that because it's like another like excite. And we are fire signs. Yeah. Like, yes. You get bored easily. <laughs> <laughs> We're always looking for new experiences. And that's what it is. Uh huh. But I can tell you that through my yoga and just allowing myself to do different meditations and really allowing myself to go deep. And the Mm -hmm. more you do that, the deeper you can get Mm -hmm. and more connected you can get. That's probably more powerful than ayahuasca. I was going to say that's, and that my most transformative meditations, the times I felt most connected where I'm like, Oh, I, you know, like I had this beautiful vision and I don't usually, I am not a person who frequently, gets like clear visions or anything mm-hmm. in my head I just kind of have like I'm very much like a knowing person I'm knowing and too. um a like a, a feel like I can sense how you're feeling and work with it and shift it e- without you know that kind of um but I you know I was just meditating at home like not on hallucinogens um and um you know had this this vision of like a like a circle, almost like a grid, like a network that was like expanding, like just like across the world, but that like I was like at an edge of it, like out where, like by my school and that I was like holding, like energetically, like holding hands with all of these like women in this like big, like kind of spanning across like the Midwest. And I was just like, and I am exactly where I need to be right now. And I don't know, I still don't know exactly what that means. I had some things with it. Like, it's still, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was, but like, that wasn't, you know, I'm going to go eat a bunch of mushrooms and trip balls and like talk to aliens. That was like me just like, again, dropping in. I mean, that really sounds cool and fun too, but. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of funny you said it because I basically what happened was, um, I never was like into drugs or yeah. Um, I stopped drinking alcohol when I was twenty three mm-hmm. because of several reasons. Um, I, yeah, <laughs> I almost my partner and I all, like are pretty much that's, alcohol free. That's another another. Story. I hear you. Like, yeah, <laughs> we should ha- talk about that sometime. Though. <laughs> that I feel like we'll do more of these. <laughs> I think it might be a yeah. regular thing. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be awesome. I would love it. Yeah. Um, no, so like my husband was into like wheat. Mm-hmm. You know, and we did yeah. like gummies and stuff. Yeah. And then one one friend who I don't really know, we just got this gel, and it wasn't like we really didn't know how much we were taking. Mm-hmm. And since like when you are more connected, you get into that state a little bit faster. Mm-hmm. So if you wanna hear crazy, I was traveling through different dimensions. I literally yeah. just went across the hall in my apartment, and I was completely somewhere else. Oh my god! And then when I went to the bed. Because I wanted to sleep it out. Yeah. There were the aliens. Oh, you went to bed with the aliens? Well, first of all, there was one that he was like looking at me through like okay. a window. And then when my husband was trying to hold me and just like yeah. me down, he's becoming like his hands. Like, oh, was, wow. Like, wrapping around was me. it scary or was it like comforting or was it just like. It was just. Neither. Really, I honestly just. Thought I'm gonna get a heart attack. Like I, I was freaking yeah. out a little bit, and then having those images, I was just like, and it's kind of interesting because it's like, are you entering certain state of your brain that you? Because I feel like all this is around us. We just with our usual like we cannot really. Yeah, see our it. perception is not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So even like they said like when somebody dies, like they're around you, you just are not in that same frequency mm-hmm. to like hear them or feel them. Yeah. So, I mean, it was probably scary enough for me not to do drugs ever again. Yeah, no, I was going to say, <laughs> sounds like the right choice. So, like, when you talk about ayahuasca, I don't necessarily know how much more I can shed, at least from this lifetime. I'm yeah. moving to my past lives now, yeah. which I don't know if you believe it or not. but I do. Yeah, so, and speaking of that, that's pretty much, um, I did, like, past life regression. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I knew there was some... And it's funny because, like, when you do it, you start realizing all the lessons you do in, li- like, this lifetime mm-hmm. has something to do in, like, all your lifetime. Mm-hmm. So, like, you just... Um, so, I was a high priestess. Oh. 3000, like, uh, 3000 BC in, like, Babylon. Okay. Um, and 
I was using dancing as a way of bringing in cosmic energy to Earth. And I was like bringing like fertility of like the nature, like just so we have like um, harvest yeah. and like other stuff. Um, and I was the leader of the group, which obviously that's what I said. Like, I can yeah. literally visualize where it was. Like I could yeah. see it. Um, and then man came in and he basically wanted to use our dancing for his plan and I mm -hmm. refused. So he pierced my eyes with a knife. I'm like, Whoa. and it's funny because this lifetime, every single person, like the most compliments I get is from my eyes. Yeah. So like You're having very striking eyes. So having, uh, like it, that was like, since I remember all the time, everybody's like, your eyes, your eyes, your eyes, you know, so crazy. Yeah. And then the other lifetime, there's multiple, but it's just like two that definitely were the most like channeling. So yeah. like I was able to connect with lots of different things and basically I want to share what I channel, but <gasps> there's certain star seeds. I don't know if you believe in that, uh -huh. like put like spell on me. So I'm not okay. able to see and I'm not able to see. I have like a veil over my eyes, but I can still, I hear spirit guides. I okay. hear my higher self. And then I do feel and I like know. Yeah. But when it comes to visions, that happens really little. Yeah. So it's insane. Yeah. But it's just kind of crazy because it's like, I have that, like, you know, when you have that nudge, when you know that there's something that it's there's for you to know, mm -hmm. that's when I'm like, okay, like. Mm -hmm. show me you know? yeah like the same thing with like goddess isis yeah it was crazy i because keep looking at the isis and i like, know, love she's it beautiful she's gorgeous she's like my girl yeah. it's crazy because it's like i that's i don't know how long ago it was um but i just felt so this is a moldavite and i really just went into the stone because moldavite is really good when it comes to like don't do ayahuasca and get a moldavite <laughs> I mean, that sounds... <laughs> no, literally, it's just basically ready or not. Yeah. Like, here you go for a ride. Here I come. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and funny enough, it was with those wings. And I didn't know that it was ISIS. Yeah. So I was really drawn to this. I got it because of the stone, not uh -huh. because of the wings. Not because of the wings. And then, and then yeah. I'm looking up like high priestess and all that. Yeah. And this literally, this is the same symbol was on the freaking website the same day it was insane and then my friend was just like hey i have this statue i don't need anymore do you want it i'm just like yes, yes. i do <laughs> actually i think it's supposed to come back to me yeah so i just yeah. kind of like and you know i feel that i have this like nothing will pass you what is for you right and sometimes it takes longer than for others but it's just because you might not be ready. Like, yeah. you just see what you're ready for. Yeah. And you have to do the work. Yep. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, girl. I this know. has How been I'm, amazing. I know. I'm like, I feel like I could just, like, keep going. I'm like, I also, though, I'm like, my mouth is dry because I've been talking yeah, so much and I'm out bathroom, of water. Yeah. But, um, and I don't know what time it is. I do need to be I keep know. track I was just of like, time. Yeah. But, oh, my God. Six oh, six Holy shit. What time are you? Uh, um, I, uh, I was, I was planning on leaving around this yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, this is perfect. Um, but yeah, I feel let's like, just like, we, like just finish it. Yeah, all. let's like, finish it up and yeah, then we'll yeah, take like a drink like, and like, yeah, and then but again, I feel like there's so many conversations oh God, like, to yeah. have now that we could actually like, you know, be I like, let's do you this. To, I want you to talk about the draw because it's something. Oh, like, I love to. Yeah, because it's something that I feel like lots of straight people yeah like i'm really curious about it yeah the place i go pole dancing yeah it's literally next to do next door oh okay and i freaking love like but like i don't really understand like what does that mean like like i want to know from your per like because for me i'm an outsider who's just looking at it right 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 I'm, like, right fascinated by it yes and i want to know more right so like but as I, a queer person but yeah, also yeah. as a cis queer person going in and like doing drag of that is drag of the gender that I have lived in yeah. and feel comfortable with is a kind of a, it's an interesting thing mm. too. So I would love yeah. to, again, I am like, I've never been out of my house in drag. Well, actually I have been out of the house, but I've never performed, but I do have a lot of thoughts on it. And yeah. I'm a big consumer of the drag. I just so. feel like, because it's like, again, it's probably not like there's, because for me, 
like I feel like the whole healing to me is like coming out of the closet. Yes. And even though I am not like I'm, I think I'm straight. Like yeah, I did try where to go. <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Because I'm like, I don't know. Like, let's like experience, just yeah. right? Like, this is human life. But it's like, just like, for some reason, I feel like in my past life, I definitely might have been, like, you know. Yeah. And I always, somehow, it always feels like when it comes to the authentic self, you're coming out of the closet. And I think you're right. I mean, again, it is. I mean, people, again, with, you know, coming out of the broom closet, coming yeah, out yeah. of the wool closet, yeah. coming out of this, because... Being queer actually, again, has made it easier for me to be authentic because you're forced into that. Mm. I think it's actually a huge gift and mm. I'm very, very glad for it. I think it is. it can be more difficult when you are living in a life that is pretty heteronormative mm -hmm. otherwise yeah. because there's more expectations on you. I mean, 100%. in my life, I mean, like, we make the rules. We couldn't even get married when we started dating. It wasn't legal. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, throw it all out. Like, so I, I do that, think yeah. um, that there is a sense mm -hmm. of coming out of the closet, even for, you know, cisgender, hetero people, when they are really stuck. Again, not doesn't have to mean you're like, you know, getting super spiritual, but when you're being authentic, mm -hmm. whatever, that when means, you're, yeah. whatever that means. Yeah that is scary and that puts you at the same vulnerability and risk um, as far as relationships go, I mm. would say, not necessarily safety in the world, but like vulnerability and risk of loss or change, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So I absolutely like honor that as a kind of coming out. Mm -hmm. And actually I think the more straight people that are able to do that, the the more people will understand what queer people yes, have been doing 100%. and how, and, and there will be more compassion and understanding, mm -hmm. even though they're like, they don't understand what it is like to live as a queer person or like live in a homosexual or bisexual body. Like mm. they understand what it is like to have to unveil yourself mm -hmm. and risk things. Yeah. So, I love that. Yeah. For so, yeah, I was watching a documentary and that's what it was. I was just like, oh my God, like they're so brave. Like most like how expressive they are, like how expressive, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I want that. You know, yeah. even like knowing that it was just, I don't know. There was something about a connection with it. Yeah. And it was just amazing. Yeah. All right. Last few words. Yes. How would you like to close this? Oh, um, What gosh. would be something that you would like to leave us with? Like, um, maybe like... I, gosh, from this whole big, long, beautiful, <laughs> I started to say circle, but really it was like, just like spirals, which I love. Spiral, it yeah. was very spirally. I would say it was really fluid too. It was very fluid. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I would say that I would encourage anybody who is listening um, or watching to not feel like you have to actually do do anything to start living more authentically other than to try to just stop doing so much um and i would encourage everyone to try some restorative yoga postures to help with that I know you did a podcast on restorative yoga. It was great. I actually used one of your little, one of your examples in my restorative class the next it. day, just because it was like some nice imagery with the water. Um, but like, I would just say, if you want to start being more authentic, don't think you have to go do the thing. That will come. Stop. Stop. Put your feet up a wall or on a chair. Put a pillow underneath you. And just like, let yourself try to be as much as possible without any control yeah i love it that's yeah. what i would say 